How's it going, Teal Boys? It is now the off season. Uh, we're coming off of a national championship win, and we have some work in front of us preparing for next year. So right off the bat, let's just go ahead and advance to set off season, and we can start to get this underway. We have a lot of big recruiting that we still need to do. Um, and as you can see, we're in recruiting battles with some serious, serious players here. Spencer Stanley, the 80 overall corner. We've been locked up with Georgia all season, so we'll try as hard as we can to get that. But how about all of this XP that we got? Uh, just a ton of it. <laughs> so we did level up at the end of last episode, which gives us a few more points. We can see here uh, 15 and 1. It, the bar goes higher than you've ever seen it before. ACC Championship, the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl game. It does not show the national championship, but there we are. Uh, 14 and 7 versus the top 25. Now 5 and 2 in the Bulls and a 54 and 16 career record uh, as the head coach of the Teal Boys. I know that a lot of you guys are curious about our future with the team. So let's just go ahead and say it now. We are going to stay with the Teal Boys, I think, for one more season. I have a destination in mind for next year, assuming that we could get the job. But I really want to see out what this re final recruiting class that we can get does. I want to see if we can run it back and go for the back-to-back -back natty wins. And I've got another little surprise for the team as well. So let's do a little bit of a season review to see, you know, some of the crazy moments that happened in this past year in the national championship campaign. This is a big time snap for Radon Randell. Oh man, we're asking a lot of him to take over, but we're gonna run with the read option on first down, makes the right read, gives it to the highest overall player on the team, CJ Beasley. We get basically a free first down out of that. Uh, again, we moved Kale Mackey to the other side out here. They're gonna step back to pass and okay. Sidney McRae saying he belongs in the first team all conference list with a sack on the first game and just like that he breaks a record for uh sacks in a career he's up to 18. i'm not so sure that uh people are gonna be open on this one trying to get the time just gonna throw it for marquise that ball's way underthrown and it's intercepted so <laughs> i was really hoping to avoid the turnovers this season but we'll take a bit of a risk here but we're gonna go with the read option we do have two timeouts. Uh, well, we need to take them. Radon fumbles the ball. Oh, man. And yeah, they're going to kick it away. So another returnable punt for Marquise Jackson. Not used to seeing him take so many punts. And oh, he could be gone in a foot race. Everybody's missing the diving tackles. There's another one in the block on the kicker. It means Marquise Jackson will take this all the way to the house on the punt return. So it's a third and six for us to try to hold as they'll step back to pass. Quarterback, plenty of time. Expecting him to throw it. He does. Manny Stokes. Oh my gosh, what is he doing? He stopped running. And they scored the touchdown. Just a walk-in 66-yarder. That is so brutal. He's got to show me it, though. Looking for DJ Johnson. Corner of the end zone, and he's got it. That was a great pass. That was impressive. Strong running from the running back as he's got a touchdown there. Manny Stokes may be able to catch him. It doesn't look like it. How about Phillips? No, nobody can get to him. The diving tackle comes too late. All right, very returnable kick for Marquise on this one. Blocking looking pretty good. And Marquise Jackson, unless there's a penalty, is gone. Nobody's going to be able to catch him. Down the sidelines he goes. And two games into the season, he already has two special teams touchdowns. We have Raiden and Randell, who's just moving, and that's going to be a potentially a one-point touchdown. Does he have the speed? He does. Radon with one of his first big plays is the quarterback at the helm of this team. And trust me, third and ten here. We're getting the stop. Got to have supreme confidence in the team. Quarterback was spinning in circles, doing 360s. Always so excited to see what we get out of uh, a punt return from him. And the blocking is pretty solid to begin with. Makes another man miss. Picks up the edge. And Marquise Jackson in a foot race for the end zone. And he's going to take it. His second special teams touchdown of the game. 
if we want to feel confident in winning this one we had a chance to go up three scores so i don't like when that happens i do like when this happens marquis jackson if there's no penalties there might have been one late he's down the sideline and diving into the end zone this man is on a mission today let's look for a passing touchdown is marquis gonna be open marquis might have been open be in the back of the end zone tyson mobley completely unguarded quarterback stepping back to pass has a guy wide open it's the tight end mcmillan again he breaks a tackle a lot of space breaks another tackle still on his feet as he breaks another one are you kidding me we just let a tight end go 75 yards for the touchdown we're just gonna send them deep see what happens see if the offensive line can hold long enough because marquise jackson is wide open one play into the end zone and we've increased our lead again I, I just don't think it's going to happen again, but I got to stay committed in trying. Fairly returnable ball if the blocking can be good enough. Oh my gosh, just the kicker to beat already. Marquise Jackson in a foot race down the sideline. And Marquise, for the fourth time in this game, finds the end zone via the special teams. Two kickoffs, two punts, and he's got a touchdown receiving. I'm losing my mind here. Just going to run this one out. Still looking for points, but we don't want to get too greedy. And right on Randell for the second time. This game is gone, and this team is on fire. Streaks or flashes of brilliance, but uh, it's not a consistent thing. I'm giving it up for Marquise. Back at the end zone. The ball is perfectly thrown, and Marquise just gets enough of a step on his man. We got to go. Again, I'm going to be really, really surprised with the play calling. They won't. They step back to pass. Plenty of time for the quarterback as he goes for the end zone. And Stokes has it. Manny gets the interception. Oh, just barely stepped out of bounds. So again, on this drive, just coming close to getting that stop on third down. But we're just not quite there. It's this one is picked off. It looked like Manny Stokes hit it. And then Logan Smith, the freshman strong safety, came down with it. So I got to admit, I'm feeling very, very confident about... Uh, them continuing to get stops. This is a run and a fumble forced by the strong safety who already has an interception. And Kale Mackey picks it up. Well, let's see. Can we get the stop on third and six? They go to the air again. Man, not open. Manny Stokes gets the interception and he's gone. Well, maybe he doesn't quite seem to have the speed yet. The quarterback took a bad angle. The lineman is trying to get there. The quarterback actually took out the guy who would have for sure stopped that. And Manny gets what? His second pick of the game. So we'll go with the air attack as it looks like they want to bring pressure. Oh, they're pressuring up on Marquise Jackson. That could be their fatal mistake. He's got to step on his man. He's going to come down with it and break the tackle and he's gone. Number two in the Heisman rankings right now. It seems foolish to me because why would we not put Marquise on a fade route and just see who it is that's going to be wide open? Look at there it is. Malcolm Williams, completely unguarded. What are they thinking trying to bring that much pressure against us? Curious to see if they come out and try to pass or will they just run the clock? Oh my gosh, it's a fumble. Sidney McRae picks it up and Sidney McRae is going to get the defensive touchdown on the scoop and score. They will step back for another screen. Nobody was ready. I couldn't use her to a guy. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a touchdown. This is a joke. I couldn't switch my user in time, so they're going to score. And we're going to continue to pass. Looking for a new target. Oh, my gosh. This game is just falling apart now. Our coverage has broken down. Uh, I'm not sure if we know how to tackle. There's another. Oh, wow. Come on, pick it up. Okay, Manny Stokes picks up the fumble. Probably shouldn't go straight to the pass, but that's what I want to do. And Malcolm Williams, the safety just missed him and he's gone. He might be caught up to. No, he's cow. <laughs> wow. 87 yards to the house. Four receivers out to the right as we'll step back looking to pass. And a risky one is picked off. Oh, I thought that ball was going to be thrown a lot lower than it really was and uh, I think it maybe it just got a little bit away from Radon that was way high up in the air and it gets intercepted just nothing seems to be working for us as there's Malcolm Williams and he might be gone 
Oh, finally, a play breaks down in the secondary for Cincinnati's defense, and immediately we burn him. Malcolm was supposed to curl there, so thank goodness he kept running forward. Otherwise, that one might have been intercepted, but we will finally strike back and take the lead again. Second and 11, expecting them to step back to pass. It is a play action, and I got beat over the middle. Just didn't have the speed to keep with Rodney Anderson there, so expect the pass. They'll step back, and... Hart gets the interception. They went for Paiute and Hart's maybe gone. A couple of guys to be in a foot race for the corner. I'm going to dive to make sure we get as many yards as possible on that one. Because I wouldn't mind it if we just held them to a field goal or something. They'll step back to pass. And oh my gosh, Hart gets another interception. And he's going to have another great return for us. So with 20 seconds, 19 seconds left, we're in prime position. Really want to find a good pass to Marquise Jackson, but the coverage has been almost suffocating. He would have been wide open there. Can we find him? There it is. <laughs> Again, just the patience waiting for somebody to come open is working well for us. Radon now 8 of 10 for 176 yards. Gets a touchdown there. Should be more than enough time for us to get our breather as we'll expect them to probably throw this one up. And we'll just try to prevent that. You know, I'm going to go sack this quarterback. If he's not going to throw the ball, we're going to just drill him for a loss of three. Not going to say that they're going to quit. Uh, they are just giving it their all. A run. Kale Mackey gets the stop. Another turnover on downs for this defense. What a hit there to prevent that from becoming more. We're going to go to the air, and I'm throwing it up for him. He's burned his man before. He's going to get in front of him again, and then diving. One hit and catch into the end zone. Finds Marquise 39 yards downfield, and we score another touchdown. A beautiful pass. Only Radon's man was going to get to that one. A little bit wobbly, but way to hold on to it as he high points it. Just a fantastic touchdown. At what point do we think that this offense changes up their game plan? Because it's not working well enough for him. Is this one picked off by Manny Stokes? Backs us up inside our own 18, but... Uh, oh my gosh, a chance. Chad Bradshaw with the catch, and he might be gone on the first play of the drive. Oh my goodness, I don't know what happened there, but the coverage uh, broke down for Miami. That's 82 yards to the house. Right on Randell, 8-9, 238 through the air in the first half alone, and we are running away with this. Oh, look at how they're playing Marquise. Why should I not just throw this straight to him? He's gone easiest touchdown of his career he even catches it in stride one play Marquise is gone safety roaming to the wrong side of the field here this could be a big big play Marquise is gone can we get it to him does he have the speed to outrun this man wow yeah we're gonna we're gonna give him a little bit of bm all of a sudden, I started hearing screaming cats, which is never great news. Third and three, we're going to run the ball. And Braden fumbles it. Man, our running backs have some issues fumbling the football. Oh, I can't allow this. We got to start bringing the pressure, seeing what we can do to jump the snap. Jenkins gets in there, but it's too late. Manny Stokes gets burned by Aiden Hemingham. Well, we'll just keep running the ball as much as we can. First down and run up the middle for Braden Bennett. The blocking was phenomenal. He kind of broke a tackle, and he gets into the end zone, finds it 24 yards downfield. Charles Hart came in to replace Marquise Jackson and immediately took the kick return after Pitt's uh, touchdown directly to the house. Recording is still going as Charles Hart will get his second kickoff. Man, they put this one deep. I'm still going to let them take it out. If you take one to the house, you better believe I'm going to give you a chance to make it two in a row with Charles Hart streaking down the sideline. I don't know if he has the speed or the stamina to take it, but he gets it 93 yards inside the red zone. As this game gets underway, I want to remind you guys to like the video if you end up enjoying it and maybe hit the subscribe button. They're going to run it and... Oh, that's not good news for us. Manny Stokes missed it. It's a one-play touchdown for Penn State. Unless one of these two madmen can get the tackle, and that's disappointing. 
Beasley is in. We're going to run it towards the edge with him. He's got great blocking. CJ Beasley into the end zone. It's a tie ball game here in the third quarter. Hoping for the best again. I don't expect this one to go well, but you better believe we're going to try. JJ Barr, the fullback, breaks the tackle and gets into the end zone on a receiving touchdown. 20 yards, and this team continues to cook on offense. I'm going to take a really big risk here and just go with the cover two on the play and hope that we can just prevent the throw. There we go with the screen. And Charles Hart can't get the tackle. Just had to push him another inch to the left. And he would have been out of bounds. Instead, it's a touchdown for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Their star running back isn't even in the game right now as they're going to step back to pack. Somebody has to be open. There it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Clock ticking down. Jenkins needs to get the tackle. He knocks him out of bounds, but 54 seconds. And they are in field goal range. That was just disastrous coverage there. Uh, all we need right now is basically for them to miss the field goal. That would be nice. I'm expecting them to hit it. The kick is up and it's through. I don't trust David Williams all that much to get it done. We'll see. Maybe somebody gets wide open. Oh my gosh, there was two guys. No, it's intercepted. They're going to get the pick six. We had a for sure touchdown. Two guys wide open. I couldn't get the pass off. Are you kidding me? If they make the same mistake as they did on the last drive, we might be able to punish them for it. Throwing it up for Williams. Williams comes down with it. 10 seconds and it's first and goal. It might take a miracle. But we're here for it. On first and goal. Williams outside the pocket. Scrambling for it. And David Williams will go into the end zone. With two, six seconds left on the clock. We're going to tie the game up. Everything seemed like it was disaster for us. But a miracle ties it up. And I think we're going to lose this. I'm going to settle for the field goal and trust the defense. I just feel like if we miss the... Uh, if we don't score a touchdown... We for sure lose, so I'm taking a big risk on this one. The safety blitz on third and three. No, they're going to step back to pass. We're in big trouble. They've got a man wide open in the end zone, and it's game. Our coverage was atrocious all game long. We didn't get the pressure on the quarterback on that one, and we lose a heartbreaker. First attempt is a completion for Luca Diamant. As this is going to be another handoff. I was there with Don Riley and just missed, but there's a fumble. And the quarterbacks picked it up. Diamant streaking towards the end zone. Manny unable to get there in time. And Duke is first onto the board. A broken play turns into a touchdown for the Blue Devils. Those DBs playing quite a ways off Marquise. And Tyson makes me think they're going to be open. We're going to throw it up for Tyson and Mobley diving into the end zone i didn't think he was gonna get there but he does extends fully to get six there sets us up beautifully there and now a returnable punch for marquise jackson what can he do with it getting some blocking can he get to the corner one man misses blocks all over the place and marquise jackson his first game back from injury takes his first punt return to the house since week two 76 yards in the special teams finally gets on the board again they're pressed up on marquise again when they press up we're sending him deep because it's not going to take a whole lot for him to burn his man as this is a tough throw chad bradshaw gets into the end zone so it's uh 35 14 now can't hold them to single digits a little bit disappointing but we just have to continue to answer maybe just maybe marquise will do it right away number 55 the only one giving chase at this point and I can let go of the sprint button because Marquise is beyond gone. Just going to run one final play in this third quarter. A counter to Braden Bennett. The last one went for nine yards. This one maybe going for a lot more. The blocking out on the edge is phenomenal. And Braden Bennett picks up a final block. And as the third quarter comes to a close, so does this drive as Braden Bennett takes it 54 yards to the house. As again, stepping back to pass, throwing the timing route. We find Logan Malden, and he's going to score. So there's 250 through the air and another touchdown. Uh, and now we can bring in the second string. Gained a yard on it. Second and goal now as CJ Beasley comes in for the halfback dive. And up the middle, CJ pulls over a man. Fights through a little bit more contact. Keeps the legs moving. Should be a very returnable kick for Marquise. 
Fielding it at the goal line. No blocks. But he makes some space, and Marquise off to the races. Diving tackle misses, and he's going to take it the distance. So it just seems like in games where we're struggling on defense, it's the games where Marquise shows up. It's not quite working out. Second and three. Again, trying to bring a little bit of a blitz, and in the end zone is the touchdown. Kind of just hoping that we can at least score. I would take a field goal. Doesn't matter how many points we get, so long as we get points. Marquise, the back juke, does it again. And Marquise with the first and goal. Oh, that's highlight reel worthy. Let's see what they give us on second and eight. Looks like it's going to be a pass. They will step back to throw. And in the corner of the end zone, Freddie Rogers is completely unguarded, which is becoming all too common of a theme in this game. Slays and have all resulted in touchdowns. If that continues on this one, I'm going to be so surprised and we might be fewer than five plays as Radon Randell is off to the races and it's going to be a one-play touchdown on the option keepers. He takes it 75 yards to the house and once again, we almost immediately answer North Carolina with a touchdown of our own. As we'll see another first down. Can we do anything about it? Trying to bring the safety blitz and we get to the quarterback, but he shakes off the sack and he throws it up for a 50 yard touchdown bomb. And that is the worst way that our defense could have come out to start this game. Marquise with maybe another returnable kick. Could be a mistake to do this, but I'm going to rely on our special teams as we could pick up the right blocks. And Marquise off to the race is number 36, the last man to beat. I don't think he's going to get there, but he breaks the tackle and he gets into the end zone. So immediately Marquise Jackson answers back. Just trying to bring enough pressure, but it hasn't quite shaped up that way. This time stepping back to pass. And Smith can't get there in time. Good little corner out to Bobby Jude. And there is a chance that we could lose this game and still make the playoff as an at-large team. Uh, hopefully it doesn't come down to that. Is Marquise down the sideline again. Breaks a tackle and Marquise is going to take another kick to the house to end the first quarter. I have never seen one man put a team on his back as much as Marquise Jackson has at points in this season. It's not the most fieldable kick, but I would be a fool not to bring it out with the start of the game that he's having. And oh my gosh, he gets away clean one more time. He's picking up blocks and Marquise down the sideline. He's going to take his third of the first half. Oh my gosh, 105 yards to the house as he does it again. So the Fighting Irish bringing maybe a little trickeration to the table with a minute left. This one's going to be a run to the outside. And Kilmackey just got trucked. And comes in motion again, expecting the pass. They step back. Quarterback gets sacked immediately. Looked like he wanted to scramble, but kind of got tripped up on the line. Can we do it, though, is the real question. They step back to pass. And the quarterback's going to get hit. There's a sack for Durham Finch. Defense back-to-back -back stops to open up this second half. This is going so, so well for us on this drive. They've burned at least a minute off the clock already. As they'll look to the end zone. This one could be picked off. Manny comes down with it. It's an interception. And oh, I should have not tried to return it. Good diving tackle there. Logan Smith maybe could have given him a little bit of a block. But we get the ball back. We'll see uh, if that affects their offense's ability to move the ball. And how much it does so. Scrambling here. Late throw. It's picked up. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, just gifted them the turnover. But can we find the end zone? It's the question of the game. I'm not sure anything. Oh my gosh, there it is. Right on Randall. Makes a man miss on the option. Then he gets in 21 yards to the house. This game is firmly in our control now. Auburn held just to three points at this point. And now we'll look to the air on this second down. They are going to leave. Oh no, that's going to be an interception. I don't know why I threw the ball. I guess I thought Marquise was doing something different, but there's a fumble. And we're going to recover the turnover. So really just a loss of maybe a couple of yards. I really hope that this is actually a fumble. It looked clean to me. What a break for the offense. And this could be incredibly dangerous, but now we're going to go for it. Play action. Pressure is coming. Man's open deep. Marquise Jackson catches it almost in stride. Somehow gets caught up too, but another big play for the offense and Radon completes his second pass after the first being an interception. That one's 58 yards downfield. 
maybe taking a chance on this one. Maybe we find Chad Bradshaw early. Otherwise, we're looking at a curl, and we're going to go for it. Marquise Jackson, wide open. Beautifully timed route and ball. All of a sudden, we've turned into, like, a power-running team as we're going to go with it again, and the blocking is beautiful. Braden Bennett gets hit at the end zone, but finds his way in. At this point, short of a uh, turnover, I expect these guys to score. So we're going to be taking our timeouts to try and maximize the amount of time left for us. But we don't need to take our timeouts because Penn State's into the end zone. No shutout for us today. Bringing Marquise in motion. Going to look to scramble, of course. And there it is. A in the back of the end zone. Logan Malden wide open, as I expected. Honestly, the defense getting a little bit embarrassed these past two drives. Just unable to get off the field as they're going to score the touchdown. What a block out there from the wide receiver to pancake our safety. We'll let him rest up while Brayden gets some early reps. But on third and five, we're going to pass and we're going to throw an interception. Oh, Tyson didn't run the route exactly how I had expected. So the DB is just right there for the easy pick. We're going to have to sell out to stop the run here. Bring in pressure with the safeties. Can we get there in time? Man in motion. Oh, we just barely missed the running back. He's going to break a tackle. And Texas gets on the board first in this national championship game. On this second and 10 with 23 seconds. We can step back. There's Marquise. He makes a man miss. And Marquise Jackson might be gone. He has the speed. And with 15 seconds left in the half, he goes 64 yards to the house. The incredible little step back cheese. How great would it be if Marquise took this one back? <laughs> I feel like if I keep saying it, it'll eventually happen. It's not too deep into the end zone, so definitely a futile ball, and the blocking is fantastic. Marquise, so long as there aren't any penalties, is off to the races. 47's not going to be quick enough, and Marquise gives us the lead on the 102-yard kick return to the house. Make a man go in motion. This is going to be a run. It's a counter. Cuts it up the middle, and oh my gosh, the broken tackles are incredible. He gets an incredible block as well, and that's going to be a massive touchdown. We're going to get this play off the final play of the third quarter. It's bounced towards the edge. And the running back, Brayden Bennett's wide open. He actually holds onto the ball. And Brayden Bennett down the sideline into the end zone as the third quarter comes to a close. We are going to reestablish the 11-point lead. It picks up positive yards, but it's now fourth and goal from basically the goal line. Can we get the stop? We're bringing some pressure. Looks like they're throwing the screen and it's a turnover on downs. On top of all of that, it is fourth down. So an incompletion ends the game. They're going to go with a handoff and that's turnover on downs. What is the decision making from the Longhorns? Threw away their chance and now right on and the Teal Boys can come out and take the knee and burn the remaining nine seconds out on the national championship game. And with the clock expiring, it'll be your Teal Boys that will be able to raise the trophy. 15 and one on the season. They finally, finally get it done. It's been a really, really long time coming. With that being said, let's take a look at the coaching carousel. Uh, right off the bat, you know, we'll sim through most of this, but Ohio State is looking for a head coach. They fire Ryan Day. Uh, they had a 4-8 and eight record. Terrible, terrible season for the Buckeyes, so no surprise there. And Todd Graham gets fired from Tennessee after the Volunteers go 3-9. and nine. Believe it or not, we are uh, a favored candidate here. Us, Chad Staggs, one of our previous coordinators, and Jason Candle, one of our current coordinators, the top three for that Tennessee job. Uh, but we're not going to be taking it this year. So uh, let's go ahead and sim through the coaching carousel and see what crazy stuff happens. And I'm not sure who, but uh, obviously we changed our coordinators. We have some uh, coordinator level ups to put in. Uh, it seems like they're pretty solid. 26 and 19 levels respectively. Let's take a look at the head coaching jobs. What position changed uh, <laughs> right off the bat? Brady Hoke uh, apparently is at Akron. I was not aware of that. Chad Staggs, uh, again, a previous coordinator, will pick up the head coaching job in Arizona State. Dave Aranda has been fired from Baylor. Another previous coordinator in Jason Candle has been hired on at Michigan State. 
So maybe we're starting to get a little bit of uh, head coaching pipeline coming out of uh, Coastal Carolina. Kalani Satake has taken over at Ohio State. Uh, Ryan Day fired there. Mike Gundy fired from Oklahoma State. Bronco Mendenhall takes charge there. And that's kind of it as far as head coaches. Uh, Kendall Bryles has been hired at uh, Western Michigan, but that's not too crazy. Some interesting stuff indeed. Mike Gundy is now the offensive coordinator at Clemson. Here's our new offensive coordinator in Mike Yersich. I think I might be saying that wrong. All the Penn State fans can probably get mad at me. Uh, I think currently he is the offensive coordinator at Penn State. So uh, maybe, uh, I don't know where he was at before, but maybe he's, uh, you know, upset that he got beaten by us and wanted to come join the ranks. I don't know. Sonny Dykes is the head coach at Colorado State. <laughs> And I actually mean he's the offensive coordinator. Uh, Jim McElwain is now the offensive coordinator at Tennessee. Ryan Day is the offensive coordinator at Texas. So the, the Longhorns, who were already very, very strong offensively, pick up a pretty big piece there. Dave Aranda is our new defensive coordinator after Bronco Mendenhall left us. Uh, not at all what I expected to see, but interesting enough. And that is pretty much all the interesting changes. So, well, let's go level up our coordinators, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we stay pretty solid on offense. Defense maybe took a step down. It might be opposite there, but uh, let's just start throwing some levels in. Uh, we want to stop the run as much as we can. And then let's get uh, our tackling up and our ability to catch the ball, finish off the running, and then... Do a little bit of pass rush. So easy level ups for Dave Aranda. And here we'll pretty much just send it. Uh, I think we're one point shy of getting everything locked out. So I think that that's how we'll do it. Uh, go for the bulldozers so that our run blocking is better than our pass blocking just a little bit. But we always want to max out the athlete and the mathlete skill. Uh, so there we go. <laughs> pretty impressive. I'm just glad to have good coordinators. It really does make a difference in making all your players better. So uh, with that, now we get to go to the saddest part of every offseason. Our players leaving and we have some big pieces moving out uh, this season. Just go by overall. We have a couple of guys projected to uh, go in the draft. Let's see. So two of them are seniors in CJ Beasley and CeeDee McRae. But John Taylor, our defensive tackle, wants to declare... He's only a projected 7th rounder, 93 overall for sure. We're going to promise him stuff. Uh, he wants to stay. Let's guarantee him. Uh, oh, gosh, what can we guarantee him? <laughs> promise th that he won't regret leaving? Okay, cool. So we, we, get, <laughs> we get John Taylor. We don't have to lose him, but we are losing some other guys, sadly. CJ Beasley projected 2nd round of the draft, the 97 overall running back. Did a solid amount for us. Uh, 800 yards on the ground this season. Uh, you know, splitting the carries with Braden Bennett. Almost a little bit surprising to me. Yards per rush, not the highest. Yards per game isn't the highest either. Uh, but a nice 12 rushing touchdowns is fantastic. Uh, only two fumbles, but also only two broken tackles. Certainly, though, had some really big plays for us. Sidney McRae is one of the first guys that I remember picking up and being super excited to get him as a recruit. Uh, just a monster coming off of the defensive end. Eight sacks this season alone. Uh, you know, didn't create turnovers or anything like that. But 20 tackles for loss alongside that. Just an absolute beast. And again, had some massive plays for us. He for sure should get drafted. Alongside him, Emmanuel Bush is a guy that... Did pretty solid. He had seven sacks this year and 15 tackles for loss. Uh, part of the reason why we had such a strong defensive line. We'll lose one of our monster wide receivers. All reliable Tyson Mobley. Uh, kind of a low year production wise for him. Only 18 catches for 356 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But how about that? A 78 yarder. Just an absolute monster play there. Um, and... You know, just kind of, uh, I mean, his career high and drop passes, but also a guy that I kind of expected to always be open and to make some big plays. We will be losing uh, one of our corners in a 90 overall, Manny Stokes Jr. 
Uh, you know, I talked a lot of crap about Mandy during games, but he did end up winning the Thorpe this year. Uh, 39 tackles. He had a sack. Five interceptions on the season. This is a guy that I always yell out for dropping picks. And he always seemed to get burned deep, but five picks, including a pick six, a couple of pass deflections. He's got a fumble recovery this season. Uh, we're going to miss the production, so hopefully we can replace him, but it won't be easy. Moving on down the line of 90 overall players, which we have only seen so far, is Brayden Bennett, another massive running back for us. He had 666 yards rushing this season. <laughs> Uh, the old devil. Uh, only five rushing touchdowns on the year and some bad drop passes and a fumble. But four broken tackles is pretty impressive. Um, again, a guy who just had a ridiculous amount of big plays for us. Uh, Logan Malden over his career. Again, a reliable tight end. Something that we will certainly miss because we are not looking like we're bringing in any good tight ends in this recruiting class. Uh, 23 catches this year. His career low and only two receiving touchdowns. But just, again, able to get it done. Seemed like he was open when we needed him the most and good hands when we did target him in those situations. We lose our left guard in Willie Lampkin and our right guard in Willie Moyes. Uh, the, the two Willies, <laughs> both 90 overall. Strong parts of the offensive line. And then our third running back never really got a chance to show his stuff. 88 overall, Isaiah Conley. Uh, only 12 ca carries on the season. We just didn't have space for him. Uh, you know, maybe if we were playing like full 15 minute quarters in these games, he would be getting plenty of opportunities, but just not quite there. Uh, as we move down, any big names for us? DJ Johnson, another tight end that we will miss severely. 18 catches for a career high, 198 yards this time out. Uh, again, only two touchdowns, but the average of 11 yards per catch is so, so massive for us. Uh, no drop passes. Just uh, when DJ got open, which he seemed to be able to do more often than you would expect, he came down with the football. Kind of our only other big player that we're losing is Charles Hart, who I didn't realize was only an 81 overall uh, corner. Kind of explains some of his problems, but hey, he had a good season. 24 tackles, one for loss, a sack, two picks. Uh, the pass deflection just uh, came up clutch at a couple of big spots. Obviously dropped a few interceptions here and there, but will definitely be something that we miss. I will say 81 overall. Uh, we're looking at bringing in some defensive backs that could replace him pretty much immediately. So, uh, well, he's been here for a long time. It's not going to be the biggest loss that we'll have. So that's our class leaving a lot of players. Thankfully, we get to, get to keep John Taylor. So we keep the defensive line that much stronger. He should be high 90s for his overall this year which is fantastic but we have 17 players walking out the door this season it won't be easy to replace them but now that the sad part of losing them is over we can move to try to pick up some new guys and this is one heck of a class we've got going on first of course we've got to look at our draft results we'll take a look at us uh so cj does go in the second round sydney in the seventh nice to get players drafted and let's take a look at the other semifinal teams that we played in the playoffs to see what they threw out into the pros. Uh, we've got the Longhorns. They've got a first rounder in their strong safety, their quarterback, left guard, free safety, and then two linebackers. So not a huge class, honestly, for Texas, um, but certainly a lot more than us at Penn State. There we go. <laughs> a lot of guys, a bunch of middle rounders, uh, outside linebacker in the first round, and then a bunch of defensive players. They lose their quarterback and some wide receivers as well. Honestly, quite a lot missing. And then how about Oklahoma, the Sooners? Again, a pretty small class, honestly. Uh, first rounder, a second, some thirds, and then you get into the late rounds. So for how good the teams that we played were, they're not sending a lot of talent into the NFL, uh, Ohio State, who had a miserable season, sends honestly more than you would expect. A lot of seventh round guys, but for a team that went four and eight, that is pretty impressive. It's also pretty impressive that with this talent, they could only go four and eight. All right, so does anybody want to transfer to us? Again, a lot of spaces to fill. We've already signed quite a bit. No transfer request though. So we'll just have to advance straight on to our recruiting, uh, which is going really well for us. But I'm a little bit worried that we won't pick up everybody that we want. Again, in these big recruiting battles, we have a bunch of guys that we have big leads with that I kind of will expect to pick up. 
we get a little bit of XP for that. Uh, so right off the bat, before we go in, one thing I didn't realize, but we are sitting with the number one class in the country. Two five stars, 10 four stars, and one three star. 13 guys already. Um, they look incredible as well. Let's just go ahead and take a look at who we've already picked up before we start putting some points. I mean, uh, 82 overall, JJ Tyson. We've got an 81 overall, an 81, an 80, a 79. 78, 78, 78. Like, it's ridiculous, the, the talent that we have so far. And if we look in a good battle with Spencer Stanley, we'll be giving him a ton of points. Uh, we have 1,300 this season as opposed to 10,000 last season. So that extra 3,000 points could come in really handy and picking up a couple of players. And right off the bat, I'm just going to sit Spencer Stanley at 5,000 points. Uh, we might adjust that as we move through everybody else, but I desperately want to pick up this defensive back. Jeremy Harrison, we're in a bit of a battle with Purdue with another five-star, the number two wide receiver in the country. Um, we're up a decent amount, but it's not a lot. He's fast, which is fantastic. He's got okay catching stats, but you know, this is the type of guy that we just uh, let burn his opponent, let him fly downfield. So Jeremy Harrison, uh, early on here, let's give him 3,000. Again, these numbers are going to be subject to change. Then we've got a guy like Mike Fontaine, who's a five-star, the number one running back in the country. Uh, and we're up 3,400. The only problem and the only reason he's not already committed is just that 73% lock. So uh, just a simple 500 for now. Again, might go lower because I expect him to commit, but we want to give him the points to make sure that it happens. Uh, we don't want him to be one of those guys that just doesn't commit anywhere. Uh, moving down, we've got Billy White, who's a uh, four-star wide receiver. And I should just be in the top schools, maybe? The prospect overview actually works. This one we have a 2,000-point lead, and I think he's a little bit more locked here uh, at 94. So we realistically don't need to give him a whole lot of points, but uh, I'll sit him at 500 temporarily. And it's just kind of the similar situation. Freddie Harper, we're not going to be able to fight for 3,000 points behind Washington. It's not worth it. Uh, but then, let's see, Michael Davis, the uh, four-star linebacker. We have a 3,000-point lead, but again, only 64% locked. So this is kind of where I'm thinking we give a bunch of points to. Uh, just because 64% locked is at that range where maybe they won't commit. Antoine Pope, another guy that we're fighting Georgia for. Another defensive back. Again, we're down 600 points. Um, I tempted to go all in for him. Uh, we have 3,000 points we could potentially give him, but there's other positions that we could fill. Lonnie Bryant we'll look at. Caleb Peoples probably off the table. Victor Carr, I think, will commit no matter what. Uh, and we have probably a couple of guys like that, like Jason Rollins. So let me take a second here and I'll uh, figure out the rest of our points. Okay, well, I didn't change too much. I think we're going to keep it pretty much the same. Spencer Sandler will get 5,000. Jeremy Harrison, 3,000. Mike Fontaine and Billy White will get 500 each. We'll give 1,000 Michael Davis. We're going to give 1,950 to Antoine Pope, try to steal him away from Georgia. And then we'll do 1,000 to the defensive tackle in Lonnie Bryant. And I just gave 50 points to Victor Carr. He's not super locked, uh, only sitting at, what is it, 87%. So the 50, maybe it gives him just enough to jump on board with us, but we also don't need to fight anybody for him. So, I mean, regardless, this class is really solid. We're just trying to fill out it a little bit more to replace all the players that we did lose. Um, but I think that we will keep this number one spot with the recruiting class uh the only thing that we have left to do is just to hope see if these guys sign as we move to national signing day Ooh, okay i'm not sure if i'm seeing enough here jeremy harrison didn't commit uh neither did antoine pope he goes to georgia we did get spencer stanley and mike fontaine so two very good players uh, including another five star lonnie bryant's not coming caleb peoples uh, okay, Jeremy Walters comes, so we do get another corner. Uh, wow, I'm kind of surprised. Only three guys there commit. That's kind of crazy to me. Um, okay, well, the number one class, top class in the conference, uh, signed a couple more guys. There's some guys that must have been lower there if we signed five three stars, supposedly, but two more top ten prospects. And it says eight more guys there. Let's take a quick look at the full class uh, just to see. Let's see who went elsewhere and who just decided not to commit. So 
Uh, Jeremy Harrison goes to Purdue. We were off by 1,400, which is a bit of a shame. Billy White will go to Louisiana Tech. Missed him by 520 points. That hurts. We could use uh, the skill of Billy White there. Just uh, didn't do enough. Michael Davis, I'm kind of surprised, but Florida State, were we, weren't we in the running for Michael Davis? I feel like we were, but Florida State must have given him everything because we're down by 4,000 points. Antoine Pope, we lose out on by 1,700. We just didn't have it to give it to him. Lonnie Bryant, 285 is how much uh, Vanderbilt squeaks out by. That's kind of a shame. Victor Carr just doesn't commit. I was worried about it, but the number 10 running back on a four-star just goes nowhere, which is so frustrating that that happens in this game, but I guess maybe he didn't like the idea of playing for the national championship winning team. He was running it back with uh, a lot of the talent that we had last year. <laughs> uh, who else were we close on? Bobby Pierce just decides not to commit while we're in the lead. Ryan Carey was eh, kind of close. Other than that, we weren't too far off. Um, I can't complain. I mean, look at this class. Five three stars, 11 four stars. That's far and away the best. We tied with the second and third best classes for the, uh, the most amount of five stars, which is fantastic. We end up signing 21 when we only had 17 leaves. So we're in a good spot here. Uh, we did fail to get a tight end on the season, but I'm not super worried about it. I'm excited to see how good the team is going to be next year. I'm excited to see the training results, but we're going to have to do some position changes and all that first. All right, so right off the bat with position changes, we have two athletes. Um, our running back room looks a little bit worrisome after last year where we had three super good running backs. Uh, Mike Fontaine, we get the number one power running back in the country. Uh, he's not super quick. He should be pretty strong, but only 78 overall. And then we drop off to Todd Warren at 72 overall. Uh, and then in the quarterback room, we've got a sophomore and then some upperclassmen and a bad freshman in Russ Thomas. So with our athletes, Will Dixon is an 82 overall quarterback. So we're going to send him over there. And Ian Bain he has a 77 overall running back, so we will send him there. Uh, kind of make things look a little bit better. Will Dixon will be our third best quarterback. We'll just redshirt him this year. And, you know, maybe he can come along and replace Radon in a couple of seasons. And running back wise, uh, we've got two freshmen uh, <laughs> trying to do what they can. Neither of them super quick. Uh, so maybe a little bit more power running this year. Uh, but we probably just do a bunch of passing. At wide receiver, we've got some absolute monsters. Marquise Jackson in his senior season is going to be ridiculous. Already 99 speed. I hope his acceleration jumps up a little bit, but he should be mid-90s overall. Uh, we've got a good tight end. So now I'll just have to kind of fill out or move some guys around uh, on the line. You can see we have no right guards currently. Um which is a little bit interesting. Defensive line, we'll move some guys around. We have so many defensive tackles. Oh my goodness, how many did I just sign? <laughs> well, we're going to be redshirting a lot of those guys. And uh, again, I'll, we'll just move some people around and then see what happens. Uh, train them up, cut them out. And then we'll jump back in after that's done. So we barely made any changes. Just moved a couple of alignment around. Uh, now we can move towards our training. And then we'll see where everybody goes up to and what we need to cut. I think we're going to redshirt a bunch of D tackles. We moved one defensive tackle over to the end. And this looks good. Okay, John Taylor. <laughs> I'm really glad that he stayed because he's a 99 overall defensive tackle. Uh, that's going to be fantastic. Marquis Jackson goes up to a 97. He does get that 99 acceleration. So if we thought he was ridiculous this past season, it's going to be even better this year. Better awareness as well. All those stats going up. Durham Finch goes up to a 93. Uh, David Williams, our backup quarterback, believe it or not, is a 93. Robert Gray's a 93. Radon's a 92 in his sophomore season. He's gotten even faster. 91 speed, 93 acceleration. Kale Mackey's in the 90s. Don Riley and Malcolm Williams. So that's a lot. Uh, let's just go by position. So great. Uh, starter and backup. David is technically the better quarterback. Uh, I imagine his passing is a lot better. Uh, he's more accurate than Radon, but I think for the speed, we got to keep Radon playing. David would be useful in some situations and is going to be fantastic as a backup. 
Uh, hopefully we don't have to use him though. Uh, our only remaining running back goes up to a 78, so we'll have like three high 70s, low 80s backs for this season. Uh, kind of a step down from what we had. JJ Barr in his senior season jumps up to a 76 at wide receiver. We look pretty insane. Um, I mean, not the fastest group necessarily. Chad Bradshaw's got some speed. Malcolm Williams has that nice acceleration. Guys at the bottom here, Tim Nichols, Larry Fenner look pretty solid. Uh, but Marquise is just ready to eat some guys alive. At tight end, it's just Sean Stewart, which will be rough, but he's an 82. Left tackle goes up a little bit. Left guard center is okay. Right guard might be okay. Again, some of these guys aren't showing because they were freshmen and the freshmen don't get that training boost, but that's fine. Everything honestly looks okay. Uh, our defensive line should be good. Our linebacker core looks really, really solid this season. Uh, defensive backs, I think technically will be maybe a little bit better. Don't forget we added a couple of super good ones there. The safeties are looking better. I think this team will work. So let's go ahead and find a couple of guys to cut. It's going to be pretty easy this time out. So long as I don't do the stupid thing and uh, cut the high overall players. Let's just go and see if we can get rid of some of these guys at the bottom. Uh, Donald Scott was a walk-on last year, so we'll get rid of him at the middle linebacker spot. Uh, we'll cut Seth Swain. We have plenty of ends. Uh, we can't afford to cut Joe Purcell. Uh, but we can't aff afford to cut Tyler Nelson and then just one more guy. I think we'll just, yeah, I think we'll get rid of the free safety. Vincent Hubbard, uh, another walk on redshirt freshman. Just get him out of here. Let's keep the overalls high. And uh, we can go ahead and advance to custom conferences and we'll see if we can fix a couple of things here. And this is where one of our first surprises of the offseason gets to come in. So, one thing that uh, we're going to change up, since we're not moving teams this year, and since we've dominated the ACC, we're going to go ahead and move to the SEC. We're just going to do a one-for-one -one swap. We're not going to change sizes of these conferences. And hopefully you guys don't hate me for this move. Hopefully I'm not killing anything for you, but we're going to move uh, Coastal Carolina into the east in place of Vanderbilt. You know, I like Vandy. Kind of feels like they could fit into the ACC, though, to me. And then we bring a lot of extra talent to fight in this SEC. Uh, we'll be in the East with Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mizzou, South Carolina, and Tennessee. And we'll have a chance to, you know, maybe come in and with what I believe is our final year with the team, try to win a, a third conference in the SEC. So that will be uh, an interesting thing. We can see some new uniforms this way as well. Um, and then BTS bull tines we won't change. So now we can move to the preseason. So this will be interesting. Uh, right off the bat, let's go ahead and redshirt some players. We have quite a few that I want to sit. Will Dixon, the, uh, the new quarterback, will be the first at running back. I don't expect somebody like Derek Atkins to get any playing time. In fact, we probably can redshirt Roy King as well. Just because typically we only use two backs in a game. And if we get to the point where we need a fourth, we can just burn the red shirt. Uh, at wide receiver, we're not going to sit anybody. At tight end, we won't either. There was maybe some uh, defensive lineman that I was feeling like we should sit. Timmy Bowling, which is a really weird way to spell Timmy, but he's going to sit. I would rather somebody else came in and played at the left end position than a 66 overall. It's just too big of a drop off. Right end, kind of a similar situation. We'll sit Jeremy Callahan, uh, mainly because he's a freshman. And we've got a couple of freshman defensive tackles that we're going to sit. Uh, I'm tempted to sit Ryan Hall as well. And you know what? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Sit three of those guys. Uh, outside linebacker-wise, we won't change anything. I don't think we'll change anything with our middle linebackers. Chris Douglas is good enough to start day one, or at least get reps day one. Definitely not start. Uh, although Kevin West can sit and that way, uh, you know, it frees up space. So maybe Douglas will play some right outside linebacker or something. Corner wise, we definitely will sit both Ron Coker and Jeremy Walters. Won't sit a free safety or a strong safety, I don't think. Um, and we don't have a kicker or punter to sit. So pretty easy on that. 
Don't need to change the depth chart, I don't think, unless they have... Oh, yep, okay. Gotta put Radon in front of uh, David Williams. And uh, JJ Barr is actually uh, currently the second string running back, which is kind of crazy to me. I think that I'm going to allow it. He's not the quickest guy, but uh, why not? Why not see what JJ Barr can do there? <laughs> If things are, don't work out, we can always make some changes later. He's also our second string tight end. So I think JJ Barr is going to get a lot more playing time in this season than he's used to. We can go ahead and do our custom schedules now. And as we load in, I don't understand what's going on. I might be able to fix this, but I doubt it. Uh, for some reason, there's just always uh, week one conference games in our conferences. Might be something to do with uh, how we've changed the conferences of the mod, but uh, I don't like that. We will set up some out-of-conference games, and I think that I would like to... Let's see, we want to buy in week 14, and the buy in week 9 is fine, and we'll just kind of front-load this a little bit. And I want to play some Pac-12 teams this year. With the Pac-12 getting uh, updated, you know... I want to see if we can, you know, show off their uniforms a bit. We'll beat up on my ducks a little bit, but we'll go to Autzen Stadium to play that game. And then uh, Cal would be a nice one to play. I don't know if they're updated yet, though. So what I'm thinking is that we could play Oregon State, but I wanted to play if they were available. No, they're not. Uh, well, we'll play UCLA. How about that? Instead of going to the Rose Bowl, we'll play them. We have played UCLA out of conference, but it was like our first season with the Teal Boys when we were still in the Sun Belt. So instead, we'll go ahead and uh, play them here in week six. And that only gives us 11 games. So we need to schedule one for week nine as well. And there's not a whole lot of options in week nine. So maybe we do week 14. I'm really, really tempted here to play Notre Dame. It feels like they've been our rivals. Uh, do we play them again? This I, I think we're going to. We're going to play them at the end of the season. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Notre Dame has a bunch of rivals out of conference like that that they always play. Stanford, USC. We're going to become one of them. Um, we're going to take the game at our home, I think. But uh, I don't know. That gives us an A-plus strength of schedule. Our out of conference games, number four, Notre Dame. Um, number 16, UCLA. And number 21, Oregon. Is pretty, pretty impressive. Definitely daunting. Uh, we'll definitely have to fight to make it back to the playoffs this season. So with all that done, let's take a look at the recruiting. I got to imagine that this year, some of the top 100 really want to play for us. There haven't been a whole lot of them in the past few seasons. So what do we have this time? Going to go straight to it. Uh, fourth with the number one player. That's good. Let's add him to the board. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a lot of interest. Uh, and we're probably going to add a lot of these guys. Defensive end, Sam Young. We've got Jack Hand, the uh, the athlete. What does this guy do? Is he quarterback? Uh, he's not a quarterback. Perfect. I will take that for sure. He's a running back. We've got another defensive end in Andy Thompson. Uh, and Marcus Brooks, the cornerback, all like us. We've got some five stars with some interest. Uh, I'm just going to add all these guys on the board. We'll see how they uh, shape up. But that is, oh my gosh, so many players. 11 of the top 100 have interest in us, which is super, super rare. Are any of these guys just absolutely, f oh my gosh, a 4-3-40 from Michael Lambert, the corner. Do we have good pitch info? Ah, the program tradition hurts us quite a bit there. I don't think we'll be able to pick him up. How about in the bench press? Well, neither of those guys like us. Um, Ryan Knox will add to the board. And a 720-pound squat for the middle linebacker. Program tradition is really killing us. There's three players that we've seen that we would really like to grab onto the board, but we have a D-plus program tradition, and that's their top uh, priority here for Larry Parks. It's his second, so just kind of hurting us. Uh, but we'll just go through the rest of uh, the recruits available this season, and we'll fill out the rest of the board. All righty, so we have added uh, 35 players to the board. Obviously, since we're planning on moving schools this next year, uh, this, the recruiting that we do this year isn't super important. But we don't want to just let this team crash and burn after we leave. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and try to get as good of a class as we can. We might not spend quite as much time on it this season, but we want to look for the best. And uh, so far, we're finding some 
pretty serious players here. These are a lot of high 70, uh, going into the 80s type of guys. Uh, okay. Wow. It's, it's a very impressive bust so far. Sam Young, the first guy to go down quite a bit. Marcus Brooks goes up. Uh, okay. Okay. This is like, this is one of the spots where if you get a quarter or maybe a half of these guys to commit, you're looking really, really solid. Joe Townsend seems like a decent quarterback prospect. Uh, go ahead and refresh that. And we have a couple of points to give. I think some of these guys weren't scouted properly. Uh, okay, Jack Hand is our first bust. Ricky Walden, the middle linebacker, goes down. And Joe Justice, I had to add this guy to the board just because of his name, will be our final scout of this preseason. Goes up to a 77. Decent looking quarterback there. Alrighty, so with all that done, let's go ahead and go to the start of the season. And then we can show off uh, our final surprise of this offseason. Alright, so right off the bat, uh, six preseason All-Americans, 11 preseason All-Conference players, and one bust found. So we get a decent amount of XP to start the season. Uh, we're already like halfway to leveling up. As we'll just take a quick peek at our week one matchup. Okay, we're favored to win starting the season at number five in the country, which honestly is a bit of a slap to the face, but we will wait for all of this for uh, the next episode. As it stands, this is what Brooks Field currently looks like and what it's looked like for the past couple of seasons. Uh, you know, some of you guys with keen eyes have noticed that really this is New Mexico State Stadium. Uh, just converted to have some teal colors. So this season we have a brand new stadium that we get to unveil. Uh, capacity is currently 80,000 for the Teal Boys. Brooks, uh, Brooksfield previously before this upgrade sat at 21,000. So about four times as many Teal Boys can fit into this one to root on Coastal Carolina as we look to make a push for... Uh, an SEC championship win and maybe another national championship in our final year here. So I am very, very excited to get this season underway. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments your predictions for uh, what our record will be, how we'll do in the SEC, all of that. Maybe where we finish the season. And I'm curious if any of you guys can guess the team that I want to coach for next season. While you're down there, please feel free to like and subscribe and uh, then head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's links to the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.